All right, you graceful, live, voluptuous, salacious trolls. I'm going to bring you the finals of a tournament that I'm not entirely sure of. I think it was the Sunday tournament hosted by Fufu to do with Orcs. I don't know the name of it. Look, it's a tournament finals, and it's going to be between Deimos and Cry, who is suggesting that we don't cry. But we'll have to see. It depends, I suppose, on the gameplay of these players. Either of them could make us cry. Hopefully it has us cheering. And for now, unfortunately, we're starting off with an FC mirror. So I don't know what exactly was going on with the metagaming here in terms of heroes and counterpicking and all that, but they ended up with an FC mirror, which is certainly something. Interesting to me that Cry is not going for the immediate extra scout. That seems unconventional, as far as I'm aware, from the mirror. Generally, the mirror involves a hell of a lot of scouts, that's for sure. I mean, you can go snipers, or you can go shotguns and ASM. The theory with the snipers is you just don't want to play the melee game, period. That would happen more if you're not buff the FC, I guess. You might see Tech Marine going for more snipers, because they don't want to play shotguns against, you know, an FC and stuff. But, uh, yeah. Wow, very... Whoa, what is this garrison usage? He's even getting attacked by the bloody turret. But yeah, otherwise you go for the, um... You go for spamming shotguns because then it's just a knockback game. Wait, what? How did he... What? He was out of cover and the scouts actually shot that, that model dead? Really? That seems unlikely. That's very unlucky. Deimos has lost the attack. So they both lost a scout, they must have lost attack and Cry hasn't, but Cry, uh, I don't know, Cry, Cry's got Devastators coming out already, so yeah, okay, Cry's like 120 requisition up, which I guess makes sense because he didn't buy the scout, and I guess Deimos' superior map control has already closed that little gap. Very surprising not to get a second scout, because like I said, whether you're going for a sniper strategy or a shotgun strategy, typically you'd go for two scouts, so I'm curious what Cry does here. Also, Devastators seem really weird as well. They don't really counter scouts because of scout speed and the potential for them to get grenades, and then it also really facilitates your enemy going for ASM, which... You know, might be a great thing if you're playing against a tech marine and then your force commander could counter them, but he's not, they're both FC. So they'd both enjoy having ASM. I don't know, Cry, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you are, I'm sure you are, why no double scouts? What's the logic behind that? And now the, the two ASM come out at a similar time. Did Demos get an upgrade? He didn't. Wow, that feels like a really late ASM for some reason. It must be a late ASM. Oh, it's a late ASM because he bled a lot. He bled attack. That's why. And you know it's a late ASM because the ASM is coming out and Demos has 35 power in the frigging bank. That means the requisition, not the power, delayed his purchase. And that's because of bleed. That's bad for Deimos, actually. He'd have been able to put on a lot of pressure against this dev otherwise, if he had the ASM on the field a lot earlier. But, you know, it is what he is. He, uh, he bled. No one intends to bleed. So, Cry very intelligently here, saying near the garrison. So if he gets jumped, he can just take the garrison. And then the ASM from Christ's side can actually deal with any flamers that come along. Counter-initiating ASM with ASM, but Deimos' is ASM picking up a tactical marine model here, which is nice. And there's no support here for Deimos' is ASM. You know, they're going for the devs, it's not a good idea. They need to retreat. Yeah, that was a bad jump. He shouldn't have even bothered. Lucky, really, not to lose a model. And now he goes for snipers. Okay, interesting. Huh. But Cry already has the the energy for his jump. Gonna kill a sniper. Ooh, 
Nearly, yeah, I got that one with the bolt pistol on that dude. Nice, nice shot, brother. Now they're in melee, so they've got the range resist. They're not taking too much from the sniper shots. And here we go for the Emperor buff on the Flamers, which is going to speed up their gen bashing. But good so far for Cry. Tax over here. Can't really deal with this FC who's got the Artificer armor. Demos is Force Commander going to be going for the Power Sword here. So he's going to be pretty scary, obviously. Doing a good amount more to the heavy infantry that he's facing here with that power melee. A lot more than the chainsaw force commander here can do, but... Oh, this is a potential grenade in retreat. Should be killing models. I mean, that should kill at least two if it lands perfectly, I think. That was a good grenade. Yeah! Oh, I only got one! No! So unlucky. Feels like that damage distribution was poor. Might be a kill here on the... Force Commander, there's another jump from the ASM. They should probably go for it. They're buffed by Battlecry and for the Emperor too. That's a lot of damage coming out of them. Free swings and then the bolt pistol shots. Will he be saved by the regen? He's saved by the regen from the Artificer armor there. Certainly, some more bolt pistol shots would have killed that Force Commander otherwise. This Force Commander though should be able to push through. Indeed he can. And he gets a kill there on those scouts. The naked little scout squad here for Deimos with two models going to presumably take over the job of the capping. Force Commander is going to retreat, no problem. Interesting here that Deimos is, sorry, cries. Oh, there's going to be a lot of that. Cries. Ooh, the ASM going to get the FC. I was going to say cries. Tactical Marines don't want to be seeing here for the gem bash. Oh, he's going deep, but it's a staggered jump. And the sniper kills one of the ASM models. And another one dies. And it's a staggered jump. Oh, my God, no. Is he going to lose the squad? Oh, that's so unlucky. Okay, he's not losing the squad. He's doing attack ground to hit both the generators. This is getting sweaty, boys. It's getting sweaty. Tactical Marines and ASM advancing at different angles, so the Devastator cannot suppress them both. The Devastator presumably going to fall back to the safety of the building, but the tacks need to get out of there. They're getting chopped up right now by the ASM. Sniper Scouts are there, shooting at the Devastators. But we do have some Shotgun Scouts ready to counter-initiate. They are outputting some good damage onto the ASM. Yes, very prudent there from Deimos. Going to retreat the ASM before they lose a model. The Devastators aren't safe even with the garrison because the scout snipers right now and that is forcing the force commander and the scouts from Cry to advance on that position. Here comes the reinforcing force commander of Deimos with that power sword. No artificer armor on him though, probably would be a good idea to pick that up. Cry has the resources to go tier 2 and starts his tier 2 as well. Deimos is a little bit ahead, maybe 25% but check out this. Scout on the far side from Deimos doing all the capping. Very, very powerful. I find it very difficult to fight an SM with only one scout, man. Like, how's to contest the map control is very, very challenging. I don't like prize build. I really don't feel like these devs have, have generated that much value. I suppose they did facilitate the gen bash earlier, but... It, it wasn't even a full gen bash. They've, they've probably facilitated bashing maybe a node and two gens, which... Is that worth all the map control power and from these scouts? I, I'm not sure. I was going to say the scaling of the scouts as well, but really the Devastator does scale well. I think it's going to be Razorback versus Razorback in tier 2. Yeah, we're already seeing the Razorback from Deimos. So what Cry can actually do... Because he's got the Devastator in tier 1, he's going to have a bit more requisition. So he can make that a last cannon. And then he can go for a Librarian, potentially. Big hit there from the Power Sword and that Force Commander again, buffing up the ASM. They're not going to go for the attack, so they're a little bit late. Attempted Nade Spike, beautiful Nade Spike. Hits the FC and all three ASM. Get hit by a Sniper, but the ASM are going to jump them, so Snipers retreat out. They're not going to lose any models. Yeah, and then the ASM have got to get out. Aw, oh, damn Moss. <laughs> no need for the jump, but it's alright. He's retreating anyway. So he'll have a lot of energy by the time he gets into combat again. Here comes the Razorback for Deimos. Cry can get his own Razorback very, very soon. But I'm not sure about this positioning, though. He's going to be kicking himself soon, I think, with the Devastator has been exposed like this. Could result in, well, at least two gens going down. I mean, Tax are here to support. Looks like they're going to go over to the VP. Got those, presumably the cheap scouts. 
Oh! These scouts now that we're side capping have been fully upgraded. That's interesting. Hmm. They must just spot the flank. He's going to use for the Emperor here and his scouts, and that will ensure that his scouts win the fight. Oh, very lucky as well. Oh, I think it's too late for that cry. I think it's too late. Yeah, he already lost that one, man. When they bled the model straight away from this scout squad, it was doomed. Because it's only outputting 75% of the damage of the other one. Cry is going to just go straight for the Dreadnought. Hmm. Well, we'll see. The Heavy Bolt is going to be very useful here to control this Force Commander. Oh, here come the ASM though. That's awkward. The Sergeant on them too. Probably going straight to you, decap the VP. Oh, potentially losing his Force Commander here though. You had that sniper shot from the Scouts and then you've got the Power Sword attack there from the ASM Sergeant. Pretty scary. And he is going to kill that Force Commander. Let's see, the Dreadnought should be able to deter this push. Maybe we can get a gen at most, but it shouldn't be any more than that. No last cannon. Do the melt bomb on route. Demos probably wants the last cannon to counter this dreadnought. Yeah, no missile launch on route. But obviously, as you can see, dreadnought far too slow. Can't really. I can't really threaten the Razorback even if it had a multi-melter because it's too slow. But you then combine that multi-melter with a snare, like a last cannon snare, or the basically undodgeable jump into melter bomb combo from the ASM, and then the, the Dreadnought can actually do quite well. So right now, Dreadnought is purchasing that multi-melter, and the ASM are pursuing, but I think they're too far back. Just, just melee these guys, what are you doing? Yeah, Ooh, that was lucky. Very fast melee attack there, it was a good job they retreated to be honest. Yeah, the ASM squad are going to need to heal a fair bit. Now, Deimos has got his last cannon. Here it is. So you can surprise him. Is he getting... Yeah, he's getting Funner and Lightning too. So remember, if you've got the double snare, you can immobilize this vehicle. So if this thing's isolated without the ASM to support it, deal with the last cannon. He could 100% immobilize it right now whilst in the line of fire of the last cannon. Then you drop for the Emperor on it, make it do even more damage. You can kill a vehicle very fast. That's ignoring any damage buffs it gets from Battle Cry. Not going to get it here though. Oh, that was a very fast... Melter bomb here. This is nice use of the, the cover. Okay. Uh, I take that back. They can still shoot the dreadnought. Where are the ASM? Right, it feels like those ASM from Cry took a very long time to walk out. And Cry miss um, maneuvered his dreadnought, walked it forward there when it clearly needed to walk back a bit. But in this whole situation, the ASM needs to be here. It only takes the ASM to jump onto the Dreadnought once, uh, onto the, the devs once and the Dreadnought would be saved. So, pretty weird, pretty weird handling of that engagement from Cry. And that is probably going to be the game because that is basically 150 power that just got wasted on Cry's end trying to deal with this 60 power investment Razorback. And now Deimos is up loads of squads and he's bashing his farm as well. He is, mm, yeah, he's just going to pick up the Force Commander there from Deimos, but. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Only one scout, man. It's, it's really, really hard. Really hard to get much done with that. Then the Razorback just peeling away at those Marines, actually killing an ASM model. Feels bad. Goes for the power fist. 
Honestly, I think if you didn't want to go for Razorback Jewels, the Librarian would have been a, a way better choice for Cry. He could have gone Power Fist with the Librarian. That could have been good. Veil of Time on the Power Fist. Veil of Time on the Power Fist. Veil of Time and Gate of Infinity on a potential last cannon. Could have killed that Razorback relatively easy. And then you've got an extra unit to help you in combat. Foul Melee of the Librarian would be relatively good against ASM. Relatively. Yeah. Not hit him with the last shot there. Unfortunately, Razorback was already out of range. And now we got a Iron Halo Frost Commander. Interesting. Yeah, Christ is just gonna. Throw in the towel. I guess he. Yeah, over here he lost the ASM. That fucking hell. He lost his other. No, his only scout. Yeah, he lost his only scout over here. And of course, he just wouldn't be able to win on the map control. So, game two, we shall head over to. Alright, so a little bit of a change of pace from the mirrors, fortunately, and also from the Marines. We're heading over to a Xenos scrap between Cry's Ravener Alpha and Demos's Mech Boy. And against the Mech Boy, Cry is not going to be spamming Harmagons. So I guess that would be very detrimental against potential Electric Armor Mech Boy. Instead, going to be going for a what is nowadays pretty conventional one Termagant double Harmagons. So I guess he's got the ranged firepower on the Ravener himself. Or itself. I don't know if it's got a gender in a Ravener. I feel like Tyranids don't have genders. They're just, they're all it. So the Ravener Alpha and the Termagant. That's two sources of range DPS to try and poke down that mech boy. Interesting that Cry is going for the spawn mines here. We'll have to see if they can put in work. I don't feel like they're that good against the Orcs. But we shall see. This is a good engagement. Immediately proccing the specials. Oh, Deimos went for double sluggers. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this a lot. Because the sluggers will beat Holmagons 1v1. So certainly in the early game, it's going to give him a nice advantage. But this is where the spawn mines come in. Now, when the warriors come on the field, things get a bit more tricky. Because then you've got Synapse buffing up the Holmagons. And of course, the warriors are cycle charging, knocking over the sluggers to help the Holmagons output their DPS but as it stands right there yeah if a, if a Holmagant charges a Slugger Boy squad early the Slugger Boys will win and you should expect that because they cost more pop and a little bit more wreck too meanwhile Holmagants get stronger with Synapse and it doesn't cost you any more pop therefore no more upkeep but Sluggers get their main power in tier 2 when they get their knob so let's see how we can use this spawn mine. That's an okay explosion. Yeah, and then gonna jump the sluggers with two Hormagons after they've been spawn mined. And that is not a situation that Deimos wants. So that was very good. Retreated nice and early there with his boys. I'm gonna go for a looter. Interesting. I guess that's a good counter to the potential warriors and the two Hormagons on the field right now. It's a nice situation, the flanking sluggers. Got a lot of kills there, damn. Three kills from the flanking sluggers here. And they can just melee down the spawn mines at this point. Hmm, not if they're hesitant, they need to commit to it. So yeah, again, I, I don't know, uh, is this really worth it? Like, they forced off the sluggers, but they're not bleeding anything. Is it really that relevant to force them off? This is a hundred requisition. And look at the delay it does for the warriors, man. It delays the warriors. Insane amounts. Hmm. Well, the good thing here for Cry is that he gets his warriors and his Hormagons out of the tunnel quick enough to prevent the setup of the looters. And yeah, that's going to route most of these forces. Well, all of them. Set the mech boy. Mechboy's chilling as usual, hiding in his little garrison. Mm. 
No anti garrison here for the Ravener. So there's not much you can do about that. Though it is a very low HP garrison, so you can actually try and melee it to death. That'd be very difficult most of the time for garrisons, but not really for that specific structure on this specific map. But here we go, now we've got a Pain Boy for Deimos. I really like this Orc build that he's using. It's actually very good against Nids. Let's see, will we have the heal? He's going to wait for real commitment. Oh, but here's the Catalyst. Yeah, just get the fuck out of there, man. Wow, he gets the Backlash. Okay. Oh my god, he won that fight. Wow, Pain Boy, so strong. Wow, really well done. I did not think they would do that good. I feel like they got kind of lucky with their specials. But they must have been targeting the Hormigons to pop those specials. Sluggers have 60 melee skill, Warriors have 70, and Hormigons have 55. So when you've got the the Hormigons, um in the fight, you do want, and you're using Sluggers, or basically any melee unit, you want to target the, the enemy Hormigons that you prop more specials. But then, like the weird, the Pain Boy, sorry, I, his special isn't very strong. Does he even have a special? I feel like he does, it's just like a boy special, but it's not very strong. He's just one entity, so it's better to have him focus fire the warriors to try and get the synaptic backlash. But the catalyst damage really, really offset by the the git source there from the pain boy. That was really nice to see. Very powerful. So we're gonna have Raveners coming out as the next choice for Cry. Both players having to go quite a heavy tier one here. I mean Cry definitely having to respond to Deimos' choices here. Deimos is playing exceptionally well. He's a little bit behind on the VPs, but what can you expect? He's playing against a Ravener Alpha in tier 1. He's going to be behind on VPs. See what he's not behind on, the economic situation. He's ahead in terms of his own amount of resources right now, but also the fact that he just gem bashed all of Cry's things. But actually, the Rara squad of Hormagons chilling here on the gen farm. Oh, wow. Oh, here we go with the Catalyst bullshit again. Oh no, look at the catalyst. Oh my god, that fucking melts things. 100% extra damage, but they lose half their health over time. But man, is that scary. And now I don't know how well these sluggers are going to do. They're not killing the models, they're not getting the backlash that they need, and that. Oh, they get ripped up! They get ripped up, man! Obviously, the Raveners there burrowing on top of the looters. It's going to get rid of them relatively easy. And now Demos is in not so great of a position. Man, he has such a good opening as well. That is so sad to see. Oh, it can turn so fast. When you've got globals like Catalyst making a squad do 100% more damage. And he had the right idea. He really wanted to stop that gem bash. So he went for the tunnel first though. He didn't go for the temptation to just try and force off the Hormagons. Because of course he knew the rest of the melee army is going to be coming out of that tunnel. But it freaking got him killed. Because they did come out, and they hit that catalyst, and they just wrecked him. Crazy. And now he's pushing it very fine with his mech boy, but he does get out of there after bleeding a few termigants. That's nice, I suppose. Raven is burrowing out over here. Going to rejoin the warriors, which will give them synapse. Cryos had very good control of the center vp i guess the termigants have been dealing with that quite a lot we've not really seen the termigants in the action very much so they will have been supporting the ravener to ensure that the ravener can win against the mech boy and yeah it's meant that he's had the control of the top part of the map for most of this game you see that reflected in the vps But damn, he is quite far behind in tech, is our boy Cry. Demos already about two thirds of the way to tier two, now three quarters. Cry nowhere near. He's got the power at this point, but he's got nowhere near the requisition. So this is good for Demos still. I wonder what his choice in tier two is going to be. As I said, you know, you get those knobs that's already queued up. Along with the stronger git sauce on the pain boy. That could be quite a powerful combo. Now we've got another Ravener Tunnel coming down this way. Looks like the looters are going to reposition to cover that. In case anything jumps out of it other than the Ravener. The Ravener will be there, but it's okay. The Ravener Brood comes out of the tunnel. Going to jump straight on the looters. And unfortunately for Deimos, the Sluggers aren't in quite the right position right now. They're only coming in to fight. 
as we speak. Should be a heal on them though. This should be a good fight actually for Deimos. With the Sluggers having their knob. We've seen that Catalyst again. But he needs to focus on those Hormagaunts and send them flying with special attacks. Yeah, they got to get out of there. There was a special attack. Man, yeah, they do a lot of damage, don't they? Tier 2 Storm Boys. The next choice. Oh, this might be a dead pain boy though. Leapt on by the Warriors. Opening up the potential for a lot of damage coming out of the Hormagaunts here. Warrior is eventually taken down. Probably another one, and another one. That doesn't unfortunately kill any homogons though. Is he going to get the squad? Beautifully executed. Who said Stormboys couldn't chase? There you go. Stormboys wiping out the Warrior squad beautifully there. Showing the strength of their power melee. What a great tier 2 choice, eh? Now the Stormboys, they really are very valuable in this matchup it has to be said the power melee is great against the synapse creatures the bomber boys is great against the gaunts and the knobs just a friggin badass the power melee on the storm boys helps you chop up a tyrant guard and then it goes in shield wall and the heavy melee headbutts from the knob are also pretty damn effective but there's a good example of their inability to chase can that boy get a chop off no he can't unfortunate he needed to be a little bit quicker all have Bomber Boys, so he had a longer jump range, and he could have taken out that Ravener Alpha there. I wonder if we'll see any gear on the Ravener Alpha. Certainly not seeing any yet. Maybe we will soon. Shield Boys just chilling in the garrison here. Not really too much the Raveners can do about that. Just gonna vacate the premises. Go back to base and heal. Lots of tunnels all over the place, that's for sure. Speaking of tunnels, here comes another one. Yeah, trying to get the ambush on these shoot boys here, the double homogots in retreat, and man, do they put in some good work. Kill four shooter boys. I think the storm boys might want to jump out of this one. Yeah, they do. Getting their bomber boys, it's going to be very valuable to jump a bit further. Mech boy got the battery back here, you see there, full health right away because they were full models again using that catalyst he loves that loves that catalyst it's very hard to counter that said it did cost him literally six homogons right there so i don't even know if that was worth it oh it definitely wasn't because there were sluggers in retreat path they just wiped it damn can destroy this tower relatively easy though. Turning it down would be quicker, but it dies either way relatively fast. And Cry is going to be going for a Tyrant Guard, but you know, we've kind of got the counters already on the field with the Slugger Boys and the Storm Boys with their power melee. 1v1, it's not going to go too well, but you know, these are units that are much, much faster than the Tyrant Guard, so they should really be out positioning it. And not fighting 1v1s. They should be fighting it when it's isolated from its army. Where they can gangbang it. But we'll see how Cry plays it. A good tactic against the Orc melee. With the Tyrant Guard is to escort it with Spore Mines from the towers that you get in tier 2. Making them only half the price. When the Spore Mines explode they'll do really good damage to the Orc melee. But really don't really affect the Tyrant Guards. It's only a single entity. We'll see if he utilises that little tactic. For now he's calling in Rippers. I mean, that's going to be good to deal with the looters. That'll be the primary target. Of course, also helping with any shooters that turn up. But the shooters haven't really been used for combat, mostly just for capping. I guess to help control a Ravener as well if he goes for a full melee build. Since he hasn't, we're actually seeing zero upgrades in the Ravener Alpha. We're not seeing any, uh, any upgrades in the shooters. But here we go, we got a good amount of DPS here coming onto the Storm Boys from both the Termas, the Raveners. Okay, just the Raveners and the Termas. I wasn't sure if the Ravener Alpha was there. But then a lot of it offset by the the heal, the battery pack heal coming out of the the mech boy there. But they are eventually forced off of those Storm Boys. Which is trying to do what it can, of course. At this range it should be doing insane damage, but super heavy infantry armor is protecting the tiger. Tyrant Guard for most of that. He doesn't really want to tangle 
with a slugger knob and all this supporting sub commander kind of play going on does the tyrant guard when he doesn't have synapse himself so he charges out and goes back to the safety of the base at this point he's so close to the base he might as well heal up a new warrior brood has been summoned by cry that's going to be his play and presumably yeah adrenal glands are coming up for them so that'll make them a lot tankier i mean it's it's kind of a no-brainer choice really i guess to some extent he could have gone bab strangler but when there's a weird boy and stone boys that doesn't feel like a good idea just make them the ultimate tanky melee fighters sure Really nice one-two combo from the weird boy and the pain boy here, forcing off the RA, gonna take over the map on the bottom side. And it's actually looking pretty good for Deimos right now, he's taking tier 3. Let's see what Cry can do. Main blob is pushing this central VP, and the Raveners are there when the looters do show their hand. And they need to show their hand because they are currently detected by the warriors, they're not even gonna fire. They're gonna get jumped straight on by the Ravener brood. So that's the looters gone. It's not too consequential though. It wasn't an army versus army fight, just a one squad forced off. Meanwhile, Deimos is grabbing the bottom part of the map. So likely they're gonna converge and have an army versus army fight around this contested centralized VP. Here we go, Spawnmai is gonna be escorting the Tyrant Guard potentially, but you need to make sure they're not too close to the Ravener Brood. That would be unfortunate. They are definitely posturing for a big fight here. Tyrant Guard getting a beautiful special on the Pain Boy. Can he finish him off with the support of the Homogots? No, he can't. Homogots get yeeted away. But here is the Acid Splatter on the Ravener Alpha. Lots of damage coming out the Ravener Alpha. But unfortunately, just as much damage coming into him from those Storm Boys. And this, they are going to be able to kill that Ravener Alpha. Warrior Brood do have that Adrenal Glands. But are nonetheless pops by the Slugger Boy squad. There's a Walt Vomit stunning. What, three Homogots and a Ravener Brood? I'm not sure about that one. And the Tyrant Guard, of course, you can't stun. Functioning like a vehicle in spite of its super heavy infantry armor. And that thing's just going to run straight through and tie up the Weird Boy. That Weird Boy has to get out of here. So Mech Boy flirting with taking the top VP, but he realizes mm, that might not be a good idea if there's Ravener Brood there to shoot me. So he's trying to force them off, but it's not going to work. Well, maybe it will if he takes a garrison. We'll have to see. Probably enjoys taking this ranged firefighter. At some point, one of these rads has to die. Really, they're burying him? Surely you could have just forced melee. <laughs> wow, they are very low considering... I was just about to say, considering they are free models right now. Crazy. But then, of course, they lost one. Uh, of course they did. Is that a looted tank? Indeed it is. There is a looted tank now on the field for Deimos. How the fuck is Cry going to deal with a looted tank? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Highest splash damage in the game. Highest damage per hit with its shells. Not the highest DPS, but the highest DPH. And that's important on a tank, because that's what they do. They move in, they move out. Yeah, that is a GG well played coming out of Cry. He's going to surrender. Damn. So is that... That's... um, That's 2-0 to Deimos. So with it being a best of five finals, that means that Cry has got one more game to... Or redeem himself or he is out of this thing let us head over to game three all right ladies and gentlemen we are entering game three i have had a, a little tea break i've got my tea here wrestled with the jack russell it works out because i'm a dwarf so it's quite a good wrestle with a jack russell but yeah um we're on game three. 
And Don't Cry is going for double termagants this time. Oh, he doesn't want to do the Hormagot shenanigans. He's going for the classic. He's playing the Hive Tyrant. And he's going to be facing off against the war boss. Now, I don't know if there's any rules in this tournament about abusing pathing with the larger heroes. You can abuse pathing with the larger heroes like the Hive Tyrant to basically immobilize the Orc war boss and make him not be able to move. And then you can just shoot him to death with the Termagants and make him unable to do any bleed. It's, uh, it's pretty disgusting. I don't know if there's a rule to prevent that. We might see right here, though. Oh, that was a bit laggy, actually. What the fuck? Well, it seems to be okay now. Uh, apparently not. Because he didn't really do too much of it there, and he just allowed both the Hormagons to... Wait, what? The Sluggers knocked over, like, five frigging Termagants there. I think the Sluggers would have been fine to stay in melee, because the Spawmires would not really want to be blowing up when they're literally on top of the... Termagants, it would hurt the Termagants more than it would hurt the Sluggers. Spawmires do do friendly fire. They do do. And we're going to see the Warboss actually killing four Termagants right there. So that, this is a great start for Deimos. He's going for his double Slugger start again. And now the Spawmires are going to rotate to the side. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure that Sluggers by default 1v1 the, the Spawmines. And then it's just 100 requisition down the drain. Though it does leave you vulnerable in retreat to attack from... Hormagants and Hive Tarn. Or really anything. But yeah, they're just going to retreat. And that's most of the spawn mine usage gone. I don't like going spawn mines against the Orcs. I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think this is cost effective at all. It's delaying his warriors massively. The looters are coming out before warriors come out. Well, I suppose he wants Raveners. But it's not the point. It's delaying his tier 1.5 quite a lot. I mean, it... <sighs> yeah, they beat them 1v1. So that's 100 requisition down there. Is it worth 100 requisition to delay these sluggers from capping? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that was. I'm not sure. I'd have to play more. But either way, it's going to be the Raveners now as we expected. Of course, he's got the basic synapse already thanks to playing as the Hive Tyrant. So we'll see how these guys do. No Gaunt upgrades yet. And, uh... Yeah. Just the looters so far. No war gear on the war boss. Well, Ravenous showcasing their power right there with their burst damage, instantly gibbing that shooter boy because he's foolish enough to not be in cover. But the looters then providing a nice bit of counterfire, of course. Cry isn't really sure what kind of support's there, but now he notices the, the war boss and the shooters are on the right. I don't know if he scouted the sluggers down here on the other side, but either way, you can now see it's close enough. Just burrows on top of the looters and forces them off. Now, Ravenous should be pretty decent against the Warboss here. They are faster. I give another model. And he is using the pathing. There you go. See, so now the Warboss can't move. Oh! He, he stopped. I don't know if that was a misclick or what that was. I don't know if it is banned. But, yeah. Problematic. I'll tell you what also is problematic. Double sluggers with burners supported by a pain boy. That's challenging to deal with. But yeah, rending talons on the Hive Tyrant is a counter. And there goes one of the sluggers straight away. Yikes. Yeah, that's tricky. Maybe you got to get the bang bang hammer while you're in there. And the cyborg stomp. Or the custom shooter to stop the, the, uh, the crippling talons. But that's pretty brutal. Loses five sluggers. And obviously the other squad as well. I actually think he could have killed that pain boy if he forced melee with the Raveners there. And then a little bit of devourer fire and retreat as well. 
So this is looking like a pretty brutal start here for Cry. Like he's very dominant. Free shooter boy is not going to do very well against a Hive Tyrant. Even if they're in the building, they're not going to output too much damage. Psychic Scream now coming up on the Hive Tyrant as well. Some big investment here. One going to get out of there. Now you see we've got both of these Terminants with their Toxin Sacks so they can do their Chain Crippling Poison. Which is what they're doing. But the Looters walking over is a bit awkward. Yeah, not very much. There's a Hive Tyrant here to support. Warboss finally gets into those Termagants and gets a kill on them. And then has to retreat. And the same with the Shooter Boys, but they did keep these points at least. The problem is that he doesn't have any of the points on this northwestern part of the map. Now, Demus is getting them back now with these Sluggers, but he kind of needs them in the fight. Because now he's just running the Pain Boy around solo, which is not very cost effective. Like all sub commanders, he is a force multiplier. So you don't really want to be running him solo. Stormboy is going to be the next choice. Ooh, sneaky lure positioning. But a scream and a retreat is going to allow the half turn to get out of there. And everything's just delaying a little bit longer. Looters seem to have pretty poor suppression values at long range. Wow, look at the focus around this pinboy. And the pinboy just gets melted. I don't know what the Raveners are doing right now. They literally just burrowed into the face of the looters and lost the model for no reason. The Homogots would have got in there anyway. That was strange. I don't really understand that. Stormboys, well, yeah, they're, they're definitely handling the Hormogons. Looked like the Wolves wanted to stay around there, could have potentially got a nice stomping retreat, but yeah, Risky could have died from the Termagants. Probably would have died from the Termagants if he tried that. Not sure about that jump there with the Stormboys, probably not necessary. Epidemus forgot that he's used both CPs. Drops the Ard Boys on them, wants them to last a bit longer. Oh my god, the CPs off cooldown already. Yeah, Crippling Poison, man. Such a good ability on Termagants. Now he was doing a little bit of sneaky gen bashing with Demos while that happened. Managed to take out two of the gens there for Cry, which ironically is actually more than Cry managed to take out from Demos. Cry only got one of the gens of Demos, so that's a big win. Keeps him in the game. He is behind on tech. I mean, he's, he's spent a lot more in tier 1 for sure. With looters, storm boys, pain boy. All in tier 1.5 versus just Raveners. You gotta remember, even though these Gaunts have got their upgrades, so did both the Sluggers, they both had Burners. So the only other difference then is the Adrenal Glands on the Holmers, and then the uh, Wargies on the Hive Tyrant. But generally, Cry's had a bit better map control. Shooters finish their cap there and are gonna get out of there. Will they survive? Just about. Uh, Wow. Holy shit, one more hit would have killed that shooter boy squad. Oh my god. Mmm, that's spooky. Well, Demos knows it's just an isolated Hormigon squad. will get killed quite easily by a Burner Sluggers, even if they do have their glands. See the Burners doing some nice damage to them, but here come some Spore Mines. So if the Spore Mines go in first, they can soften up the Sluggers. Then the Hormigons can do their job and win. It's a pretty smart play. Now this is worth it. To get all these points for just 50 requisition. I'd take that. To be fair, Cry's not abusing it. He, he could have abused it a bit there. Okay. Demos concedes. Yeah, because the Tyrant Guard's already here. Demos is completely starved of resources. Has to reinforce this uh, looter. Massively behind on VPs. Struggling over here. Great spawn mine play there. Kind of baited it out, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a struggle. Probably could have played it a little bit longer, but... Uh, it's, he's got three games, hasn't he? So, he just throws this one in the towel, and it's going to be on to game number four. 
So I'll see you in game four. Game four is underway and we're going to the classic nemesis of the Space Marines, the Chaos Lord. But, ooh, Cry is not very impressed with the Tech Marine, I think. I think that's what horse greater than Tech Marine players means. I don't know why he's insulting horses. Out of all the, the animals on Earth, I wouldn't really try to insult a player by referring to them as a as a Krasivi equine, I would be, um, I don't know, I, I would, I would call them maybe a jellyfish, a whale, a, a rodent of some sort, maybe a guinea pig, talk about a useless animal, a guinea pig, could you imagine them out in the wild without humans, guinea pigs, if you're gonna go with domestic livestock, you could call them a pig, a cow, why a horse? Horses are beautiful, they're graceful, they're eloquent. Of course, a horse is superior to a Tech Marine player, and I would add to that a horse is superior to a Chaos Lord player. In fact, to be honest with you, I would say that even a swine is superior to a Chaos Lord player. But nevertheless, Cry is going to be rocking the Chaos Lord right now, because traditionally, you would generally consider that the Chaos Lord is a pretty damn good choice against the Tech Marine. His ability to beat the Tech Marine up in melee with Raptors and the Chaos Lord himself and the Blood that is in Tier 2 and all this melee nonsense is pretty good, but then if they go for a really heavy scout orientated build, you can counter it by going for the Combi Bolter. And a little bit of Miss Micro here from Deimos right at the start, running his scouts into Heretics. This is the peak of Dawn of War 2 gameplay, ladies and gentlemen, but remember, this is the finals of a tournament and they've probably been playing for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and waiting for just as many hours. Late into the night with minimal sleep and little sanity because they are, after all, top tier Dawn of War 2 players. So, inevitably, there will be some micro mistakes. But yeah, Tech Marine, if you don't know, is Deimos's main. It was the first hero he really presented as a competent player with, so it'll be interesting to see how he can handle it in a tournament setting against Cry. One thing that's really interesting that Cry is doing, and you know, I'm using interesting in the, the traditional Torpidian sense, where it means fucking weird and probably dumb, he's not going for multiple starting units, and he's just going for really not a lot of units in general. Fast Noise Marines here is the player from Cry, which is hurting his map control from the, at the start. Now, it would be even worse if it wasn't for the fact that Deimos walked his scouts right into the heretics on this side of the map earlier. But the play here is a bit of a cheese from Cry. He's utilizing that corn worship to boost his speed and get those noise marines over to the gen farm of Deimos as fast as possible. Now, currently they're encountering a pair of scouts. They're not really going to do too much to the... to the heavier armor of these noise marines but we have devastators setting up in a perfect position to intercept them as well as a flank from the tech marine they're going to be deterred by that sonic blaster that is ever so loud as one would perhaps expect and now cry thinks he's safe but of course he's not because there's a devastator there but they must de-set it up and is moving it around why did he do that i'm not sure now the noise marines are able to get into position and silence that devastator. Shut up, you filthy loyalist. I'm going to destroy your generators with the sound of Slanesh. Yeah, do you like that sibilance? A little bit sexy that, isn't it? A little bit of sexy Slaneshy sound and sibilance. Anyway, um, I'm losing it. But we've got the combo bolt now coming up on the Chaos Lord to counter some of these upgrades. Uh, we've got a very aggressive Tech Marine going for a Bionic Sweep, and he yeets those heretics quite a distance, but here comes an aspiring champion to say hello. Tech Marine probably doesn't want any of that. He was considering, I think, going into the garrison, but then he realised, oh shit, that's a bad idea, there's a Combi Bolt heal over there, and he can use that Ibele. That could be quite dangerous for any unit that decides to go into a garrison. And we've got double Noise Marines coming out for Cry. What the actual fuck is that? That's a unconventional build, to say the least. Chaos Lord probably should shoot this generator with his bolter. Yep, so the Noise Marine can deal with the node, but right now he's putting in some really good damage to the scouts. This could be a dead Noise Marine from the grenade, and he retreats into it! Oh ho! 15 HP on the Noise Marine, and he lives. That was sloppy. We on Sloppy Saturdays, guys. I don't know. Sloppy Saturdays, more siblings, woohoo! <laughs> oh, fucking hell, what's wrong with me? I've not slept much. 
But I can assure you, I'm not a stimulant. Genuinely, I'm not. I tell you, though, I was. Just haven't slept a lot. Here we go, though. Really good combination here. Dark Halo into the cacophony. You're gonna knock over the tech marine and stop them tying him up. But it's not really achieving too much because they're still shooting those noise marines. And that noise marine squad lost two models. That is a lot of bleed for Cry. And I'm not terribly convinced about the effectiveness of this very strange build that he's got. I mean, certainly if Deimos had wiped one of those noise marines with a grenade then I'd say he'd be in an amazing position. He's going to go for double Devastators right now, which, yeah, I mean, why not, man? He's against a Chaos Lord. So, you know, not Chaos Sorcerer. That's still probably better than the Plague Champion against uh, setup teams, but it's not a Chaos Sorcerer. And he's gone for double Noise Marine, so it makes Raptors quite a heavy commitment. Not to mention Deimos already has the two fully upgraded Shotgun Scouts, which would do relatively well against the... Uh, Raptors if they do present and it looks like they will because Raptors are on route now for Cry. So all things considered the economy of the players is actually very similar and they're both going to have five units as well so that'll be interesting to play out but it, yeah it's going to be challenging dealing with the double scouts and the double devs and then the ranged firepower coming out of the tech marine and the attacks. I'd rather have Deimos's composition I'll tell you that much. And you know what would be really good against Deimos' composition as well? Grenade, grenade Launcher Heretics with an Aspiring Champion. You know, maybe if Cry got um, two Heretics rather than one, maybe that would have been quite effective. But uh, no, he's going for these strange builds where he gets only two non-power costing units. Devastators did a nice little job there, gibbed one of the CSM models. I'm not sure why the, the Chaos Space Marine didn't retreat sooner, but there you go. It's like Raptors nearly managed to catch those scouts. And this is a good position for them. Demos obviously not seeing the Raptors yet. It's the first time they've presented, so he didn't have his Devastators layered. So they are going to force off that Devastator squad, but nice rotation from this one into potentially a grenade or a threat of it. It is going to be a grenade. Kind of chips the side of him, so it doesn't do full damage, but it still does a damn lot. Wait, what's he doing? Why did he jump? Has he lost his mind? He could have just tied them up in melee, and then when the uh, the Devastator suppresses him, jump the Devastator. That was odd. Obviously, he was trying to stop the scouts running into melee and force in melee with the noise marines to prevent the gem bash, but I'm not sure that that was really worth it. I think just melee and those scouts would have deterred them, to be honest. I don't think he needed to go for the jump. But one of the beautiful things about Noise Marines is that you really can run them around with one or two models and have a lot of effectiveness. Since ultimately all the effectiveness really in the squad is coming from that one Sonic Blaster. Whether you've got one model or three models, you've still got one Sonic Blaster. So that helps you with your wreck, your upkeep. You don't get as much pop if you're not fully reinforcing your squads and that means you pay less upkeep. But there's no car for the Devastator again because the Raptors are back at base. This is not going to work. You can't just charge him in like that. Certainly if you're only running one model. Tech Marine tied up in melee by the Chaos Lord. Devastators completely out of position here. What it, what's going on here? We've got Raptors running up top to deal with attacks. Okay. Fair enough. And Vengeance rounds on the Devastator squad. So the Raptors are going to catch the attacks over there. Force them off. Chaos Lord's still being a nuisance, man. Forces off both of these squads. I mean, there's a good bit of investment here in the Chaos Lord with the Dark Halo. And the Noise Marines are back on the gens again. A lot of pressure here from Cry. I'd argue his build doesn't really scale as well. Though Blastmasters are, are pretty damn good. I don't really think it's a good map for Blastmasters. And Blastmasters are funny. I feel like some matchups they do great. Other matchups, they're a bit redundant. Beautiful combo there. The shotgun blast into the grenade. And that is two gibbed noise marine models. These noise marines though can stay in play now. Because they know that the abilities from the scouts have been used up. And because he went for the, the scrap kind of combo on the noise marines. It meant he didn't have the shotgun blast to hit the raptors. So they get into melee and do a good amount of pressure on those scouts. Cry missing his raptor jumps a lot, which is not really ideal. And another beautiful grenade. Oh my god. Kills a raptor instantly. Heretic fall into some bolt of fire. That's a lot less surprising. But the raptor getting wrecked by the grenade. That's sad. Raptors will scale well. Wait. What? Cry's going for blind plague marines? Really? 
I think you should go for Con Marines. Well, maybe not. He doesn't really need Con Marines. He should upgrade his CSM, I think. Honestly, fully upgraded CSM with Mac of Zinch wouldn't even be that bad of a choice right now. Or, you know, you could just go for a Blood Crusher. Yeah, Blood Crusher is not great against Tech Marine. There's already Vengeance rounds. Obviously, you can just get Stern Guard or a Missile Attack. You can get the Melter Gun or the Tech Marine. Melter Gun's pretty great, let's face it. Amazing damage output from that thing, ignoring cover as well. It's not. It, well, it's not a downgrade at all from the Bolter. I say it's, it's a, a buff, even against infantry. It's just a good weapon all around. It's not a hard AV tool. So, I, I don't disagree with not getting a Blood Crusher, but going blind Plague Marines is a bit sus. I, I'd, you know, I'd wait to see the Razorback before I did that, but I guess Cry thinks he's further ahead than he is. But now Deimos sees the Plague Marines, and he goes, Okay, I won't build a Razorback, I'm gonna go Librarian. Uh, he's already got two Devastators, that's what you gotta remember. And then the other thing is, now he can go for a melee Tech Marine, potentially. In addition to the Librarian, now he's got a couple of decent melee assets as well to deal with the raptors to tie up these plague marines i mean these plague marines aren't gonna do anything man i mean they did something there but then again they also bled a model just walking down the expression team god and now a csm model is dropped so much bleed and a bit of a swing and a miss there with the grenade probably would have been better off saving that but look at these scouts, man. Fully upgraded with the extra energy regen. Getting levels as well so their max energy is higher. Putting in the work. Disrupting things. Another CSM model went down. Now, one thing that the Plague Marines can do is they can do a lot of damage to generators with that missile launcher. Ooh, this could be dangerous for the Noise Marines. What the hell are they doing? Is he suiciding them? Yeah? Suiciding them for, for more wreck income? I don't know about that. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I would not do that. I'd definitely keep it with one or two models. Oh, fucking hell. This is the nightmare playing as Chaos. Smite from the Librarian into one of his zaps from his... Um, from his staff. Instantly killing another Raptor model. I mean, this is so much bleed. Look at all the squads. And he can't reinforce them. He hasn't got any wreck. Silly Chaos player. 164 power, 60 wreck. I love seeing it, I love seeing it, because it's a Chaos Lord. He's just the worst. He's so easy to play. So easy to play. So Blood Letters are now out. Probably should have got them before the Plague Marines. Though that would have resulted in fighting a Razorback, to be fair. Which is why I would have gotten either, and I would have just re uh, upgraded my units. He had a lot of units anyway. Drain Knife would be pretty good right now. Would have been good anyway. But right now it's a no-brainer. I don't know why the Raptors are in melee right now with a melee tech marine and a librarian with a force staff. That seems like a terrible idea. It looks like the Blastmasters just give one of those guys as well. And now the Blastmasters are hitting the heretics. <laughs> Softening them up so that a smite can kill them. Beautiful. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, this is great play. This is good tech marine play. He is doing very well right now against Cry. Fucking hell, I thought he walked into that one. Then the blue has teleported forward. So Dimas trying to return a bit of the favor with the gen bashing, but it really doesn't matter. Like, Cry's, Cry does not care about power right now. He cares about wreck. So Demos should be decapping these instead. That's the priority for him right now. That's why Cry has got his Chaos Lord on that wreck. wreck capping duty. That is by far the more important resource for him right now. Then just round Devastator has been a bit of a nuisance. Attacks have now got their Sarge. No heavy weapon upgrades on them yet. No Stern Guard purchased either. Where's that Blastmaster? It's over here. Hey, you see, he's keeping the Blastmaster on one model. I really don't think he needed to kill the other the other noise marine, but he did. I really like the choice of the melee tech marine right now. It kind of fits the, the big 
um, composition that he's got. Has he got Gate of Infinity Psychic Code? I'd really like to see that. So he could counter the Raptor Jump or the Blood Letter Jump. Now we see Bloodlust. That feels kind of late. I think that was an attempted Gate of Infinity, but too slow. He's going to lose that squad of Devastators. Bloodlust is a very powerful ability. Nearly lost his own Heretics, though, did cry. Raptors are still in play here, but this is not looking like a great position for them. Tax can just take the garrison, so the Raptors are going to jump forward to suppress them, so the Tax retreat instead. Nice reaction time there. Let's see what the Scouts can do. Raptors need to be careful of that foot nade. God, I hate foot grenades. I've been campaigning recently to just get rid of them. Just add a minimum range to all grenades. Maybe you need to buff those units somehow, or buff grenades somehow. But just get rid of foot grenades, man. I think they're stupid. Tell me what you think of the comments down below, guys. Do you like foot grenades as a mechanic? In fact, here's the question. Out of the out of retreat grenades or foot grenades, which do you prefer? And do you think both should be in the game? And how comparable are the two? There you go. I'm throwing questions at you. I'm asking you. And the devs will read those comments, I'm telling you. So get commenting, boys. Tell me your answer to all three of them. The melee single entities here from the Space Marines are absolutely kicking ass. Drain life is here now though for the Chaos Lord, that will definitely help control them. Very, very, very good tool in this instance. It was a good pickup by Cry to get rid of that Devastator squad to be fair, or the Raptors. Could have been countered with the Gate of Infinity like I say, what you do is you use the Gate of Infinity just as the Raptors jump, but before they land, and you just dodge it, right? And then because you've got Veil of Time on them, they can just turn around and suppress the Raptors and then it's a great situation. Check out the attacks right now. Absolutely smashing the Blood Letters in melee. Hilarious. That's because the attacks are level 2, I guess, and the Blood Letters are level 1, so they're not specialing. Wait. Basic attacks, yeah, they, got, they must have 70 melee skill, I guess. It's kind of wild. <laughs> there you go. There's the uh, end of the Blastmaster. Grenaded out of infiltration. It's a classic problem for Chaos in this matchup. I mean, Deimos is, is making this look easy. Let me tell you guys, finding a Chaos Lord as Tech Marine is not easy. They can overwhelm you with melee very easily. But the scout play has been beautiful. I have to admit, only going one heretic, I feel like that really does make you quite vulnerable to it. And I, I don't know that the double noise marine is... Yeah, I, I'm, I just I don't know about that build. That's such a strange build. And double devastators is such a clear counter. Now the Razorbacks coming out. Obviously there's a counter in the Plague Marines, plus the Raptors. Plague Marines into Raptors can be a good counter to transports. Because the Plague Marine snare lets you actually get your heavy melee hits in with your Raptors. But... You know, you just use your, you use your Razorback very defensively and you should be fine. I mean, a, a good attempt there to snipe the Librarian with the Drain Life, but covered by the Shotgun Blast there from the Scouts. And wow, that's a lot of melee damage in retreat. Can he kill the Sergeant? Pretty fucking close. Why is he using Malignant Blindness? That's a bit weird. I don't get that. One more hit from the Hellblade there of the Blood that is going to take down another attack, but not the Sergeant. Quite lucky there for Deimos, really. Oh, there's a Blood Crusher! I didn't even notice. Whoops. Uh, so we got the Raptors getting a bonk. Bonk. Oh, and they're jumping after it. The Blood Crusher has killed the Razorback. The bonk from the Raptors plus the Blood Crusher. Too much to micro right now for Deimos, apparently. Deimos is capitulating big time. Only 86 VPs left for Cry. Can he get the reverse sweep? Bloodlust activated, giving a lot of damage to those Chaos Melee units, and the Raptors there, I think, were the ones who slain the Tech Marine. Raptors MVP, boys, but look, Raptors, you are, you should always go Raptors if you're playing Chaos Lord against Tech Marine, unless they're going, like, triple shotgun scouts or something. Raptors are amazing. Typically, you get the, you don't get the Mantle of Hate, but you'd have the, um, the tanky melee armor in tier 1, I forget the name of it. What's it called, man? I've totally forgot. But what it does is, it's a tanky melee armor for the Curse Lord, which is one thing, but it also 
when the Chaos Lord attacks people, he gives himself more energy and any nearby units. So you can fuel your Raptors so they jump around like crazy. And he gets a Tech Marine, which is literally an entire tier 1 of range units except ASM. And look at the build that Deimos ran, he didn't even get ASM. Um, yeah, Raptors being able to chain multiple suppressing jumps, very, very powerful against those range units. Plus it makes the Chaos Lord even tankier. Is the Blood Crusher going to get the Librarian? No. Close. Got kind of lucky with the Raptors I noticed a few seconds ago while I was blethering on, yeeting the Librarian around the place. Needs to get some levels on that Librarian, but yeah, that's going to be tough because the Raptors are level 2, nearly level 3, so you're not going to out-level the Raptors at this point. It's not going to happen, and now there's a Chaos Dreadnought coming out. I'm not sure how Cry's economy is doing so well, to be fair. He's still running around with just basic CSM, which I find very odd as well. I would have definitely got the Mark of Zinch on those guys. You are losing us a victory point. Maybe he really values Slaughter. I'm not sure if Slaughter um, CSM beat the... And they shall know no fear. Space Marines in melee. Sure. guard getting ripped up in melee, Tech Marine getting kind of cooked by the Drain Life. Needs to get active. Oh, he slays the fucking Inspiring Champion. And he slays, slays a Raptor. Okay, he's getting active. My boy's getting active. My boy is active, fit, and ready. He kills another Raptor. Is, is Cry just suiciding me? What? I mean, I. Ugh. Like, you've got a lot of units, sure, but no, he's not. He's looking down here. That's why he's, he's watching the Blood Crusher. I was going to say, those Raptors are the fucking MVP. They were dominating. Blood Crusher's going to get the Tech Marine, though. I didn't even need to. Combi ball to Chaos Lord. And now the Chaos Lord's rotating over, and this Devastator has gone inside the building. He's got no HP. Going to get melted out of the building by a Immolate from that Combi ball to... And that's going to be the towel thrown into the cage by Deimos, in spite of the fact that Cry only has 68 VPs. Ah, that's tough, isn't it? He did have two fully upgraded scouts. I guess if he still had the Tech Marine and he could get a Melter Gun on him, maybe there's a chance. Or another last cannon. Yeah, he had the resources and he had the time. I think that's a bit of a premature... Uh, concede there from Deimos. I think he definitely could have done it ratting around with the with the scouts. CSM would be annoying for them to deal with. Plague Marines less though. But yeah, look, it'd be hard, but I think maybe a little bit of a premature concede. I don't know. He gives it up. We're going to go into game five. Yep, that's a best of five going to the fifth game. Isn't it beautiful? What a glorious finale. What is the matchup that we're going to be having? You guys will find out imminently. The grand finale is before us. We have Donut Cry playing as the brother captain and he's facing against Demos with the Plague Champion. Let us see if Cry wants to build more than one unit before tier 1.5 this time. I doubt it somehow. But we shall see. Oh my god, what is this? Eta dva heretic. I am flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. What? He's going. Oh! It's because it's Demo! <laughs> It's because it's Demos! Cry is only going for one IST, of course. Because he doesn't like multiple tier 1 units. He's all about that tier 1.5. Why did I think... Uh, because uh, Cry was the Chaos last game. God, is confusing these best of five series. God, you'd think I'd been up all night playing a tournament, wouldn't you? I wonder what I was up all night doing. Yeah, just not sleeping as usual, you know, insomnia is kind of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> oh, cry. Oh, cry. Oh, cry. I mean, this is some spicy aggression from cry. 
totally ignoring his two VPs that he could have caught. Well, but you know, the one natural and the contested that he is way ahead of, but not really contesting. Well, he is now contesting it with his IST as the strike squad back off. Only one strike, uh, only one heretic pursuing the strike squad here, but I'm sure they'll be fine. This is a very injured strike, strike squad at this point, and they did have the supporting bolt fire of the PC and the CSM. It is going to be a fast purgation versus a fast havoc in this game. Two generators dropped very early for Cry. No surprise there. He only went for one um, starting unit, as usual. But Deimos really has to... You know, put the pressure on. BC and Strike Squad do have a lot of pressure early game, and that's obviously going to help Cry get away with this pretty greedy build, to be fair. Strike Squad don't have their Tomes of Titan yet. Therefore, their HP regen is not absolutely bananas. Went out of combat. And this is the first time they're seeing the Havoc, and a beautifully positioned Havoc there, covering most of the center of the map for Deimos gonna route the strike squad. Purgation will be able to soft retreat away, they don't need to actually hard retreat. You can kind of stay in play, rotate to the right hand side, support these ice team dealing with these ticks, perhaps. Looks like the ticks will go cap, and I imagine the CSM will poke down the IST. Have it maybe rotating to cover this position. Okay, this is gonna be a full timing push from Deimos onto the gen farm. But heretics here do not enjoy some incinerator fire look at the bc loitering coming around the flank trying to tie up this havoc forces him to disengage csm are the ones that are going to be running forward to type the purgation they can attack the incinerators a little bit better since there's only three of them versus the eight of the poor heretics but even then man you don't just want to run into the purgation like that maybe if you had a hero perhaps Ooh, damage of time might kill the bc it does Combination of the Havoc fire and the damage over time was problematic there. Basically, whichever one the Strike Squad didn't tie up in melee was going to finish off the BC. A bit of a greedy overextension there from Cry, really. There wasn't anything... I don't know. Like, he, he won the engagement either way. I don't know why he had to push the BC so far forward. And now we've got Noise Moons, which is going to be a beautiful counter to the Purgation. Now, this stuff's going to be delayed for a while. Wait, why the Purg the, uh, stri the Noise Moons not firing? Okay, now they fire and shut them down. There's a lot of AoE damage actually onto the heretics there, jeez. So if you combine the suppression effect with the um, the ability, the name of which I don't even know, then it will completely immobilize the squad for a bit. Yeah, we've got some interceptors, wow, that was a lot of damage coming out onto the strike squad there, instantly killing one of the models. Nice bit of stance switching here from the Grey Knights. It's something that they love to do with those Storm Bolters. It's kind of like a faction trait of theirs. They get a lot of longer ranged Bolters. So BC going to tie up the Noise Marines here. That means he's not tying up the Havocs, here come the Interceptors, that's their job I guess. And yeah, the, the Heretics of the Aspiring Champion are pretty beat up right now, so they can't do no counter-initiation against these Havocs. So there should be a nice one engagement here for Don't Cry. Looking at the left-hand side of the map, it seems that there's no resources there for Deimos commit both his heretics to this so cry is going to start capping that up with his ist and now we've got the oh fuck that was a lot of damage mind blades on the interceptors here sanctify now to give him another jump and boop, that is a dead noise brain that's a big pick actually now we've got the plague champion whipping out his plague sword gonna start killing a few of these purgation uh use the zombie to burn the gen that's funny. I'm gonna see that every day. Didn't last long enough to kill a gen, unfortunately, for Deimos. Mm, the Noise Marine loss was pretty rough. I don't know about the Noise Marines in general in this matchup. I guess they're fine. Maybe triple tick with a with a GL tick would be pretty cool. I'm not sure. 
Gone for the mucus discharge as well, which is a, a an actually interesting choice. I, I imagine that that is to counter the AOE damage coming out of the incinerators. You know, if the incinerators quickly get your heretics down to like half HP, you can just boom heal it off and mucus discharge. This is kind of risky with a BC. You're very lucky there. <laughs> Instant special against the CSM. And now the... Oh, the Interceptor's going to get specials. Okay, two specials. This guy is going to die very quickly. He died. Oh, they're staying in play, the Interceptors? Okay. Oh, yeah, they wanted to f force off the CSM or at the very least knock them over and delay them so the Purgation can continue their bash. Look at the map control, man. It's looking pretty damn blue. A Purgation... In a precarious situation now, they are gonna... Mm, they just finished the bash. But AC ticks and a Plague Sword, Plague Champion on Retreat Path. Isn't able to get any kills. What? Even with the AC hit? What? I am shocked. I thought they were in a much worse situation than they were. Level 2, I guess. Pretty damn tanky, these boys. Jeez. Oh, that is a beautiful play there from Cry. Demos and Cry are going to tier 2 at a very similar speed. Demos technically is a little bit ahead, but the problem for Demos now is he has no gens. And that's really rough for Chaos because you've got a pretty wreck intensive tier 2 anyway. I mean, he needs gens because things still cost power, but it's generally wreck intensive. So he needs to spend wreck to get a little bit of power, and then he needs to spend more wreck to get the bloody units he wants in the, the form of a, a Blood Letter Squad or a Plague Marine Squad. So that's a really tricky economic situation he's in. You see ticks are going to tank over here. Can they survive the ability? Yep, they're going to get into melee and start hacking at the purgation. They're going to retreat. So they got through that. And now can start capping up this side of the map. They want to finish that power node. VP's pretty even. A little bit ahead for Cry. But nothing... Super scary. Cry going for the Rhino. The ubiquitous Rhino. Omnipresent. But to be fair, it's a pretty bad map for the Rhino with all the tank traps. We'll see. You, look, you can't really pass up the, these transports in the current meta. They're just so strong. Supercharged Plasma Pistol on the Plague champion here 13 dps most plasma pistols only do 7 dps in the game but this guy just gets an uber pistol for some reason i guess it's i don't know it's a very dedicated anti-heavy infantry war gear the plague sword and plasma pistol should kill another purgation here indeed he does but the final model is going to hide inside that rhino which is very quickly going to turn into a razorback it is now a Razorback, because that is all the Rhino is. It is the... It, well, that's, sorry, that's all that a Razorback is. It's a Rhino chassis with a twin-linked heavy bolter on top. So that right there is a Razorback. And they're very strong. Whether it's a, a Space Marine one or an Aldo Malleus one, they're very strong. This is tricky for Deimos. He's got his Havoc, he can get a last cannon on it, he is getting a last cannon, you see it upgrading now in the HQ to that Mark of Zeech. But a good player should not lose a transport to a single last cannon. You know, their immobility is very predictable. All you do is make sure you don't advance into the enemy's half of the map with your transport without actually scouting first what's in the area. Okay, it's going to be a dog for Deimos. Fair enough. BC doing some good work there, just stalling. Hurting the heretics, lowering their HP so the Razorback can pick off a few models. Cry trying to exploit the line of sight blockers. Yeah, doing a pretty good job. You can't get hit here by the last cannon, but at the same time the Rhino has to be careful about its manoeuvring. That's fine though, the stress got going to come over. I was going to say, where's their Justicar? Oh, I always talk about how good the bloody just carries in the strike squad because it's it's really hard to overstate how good he is. He's so strong. 
so they'll be a really tricky squad to deal with now. So much durability on them. But the Blood Crusher will be helpful. There's no AV right now for Cry. I wonder if he'll go for a conversion beamer on his purgation. I think, yeah, it's pretty, it is worth it. The, the incinerators have kind of outlived their usefulness right now. You see him rotating the purgation slightly back into the side, so he's got a little surprise for Deimos if this Blood Crusher commits too hard. But Deimos is not that greedy. He's going to back off with the Blood Crusher. Let's keep these uh, beamer purgation clips so we can see any Arc of Fire that starts setting up. You see them rotating on the minimap up a little bit. There is the Arc of Fire. Maybe just going to chip the Blood Crusher at max range here. Yeah, there's a good hit. I think it takes three hits. Wow, Strike Squad and the Razorback slaying the Plague Champion there. I don't know if Demos has seen the um, the Beamer. But yeah, it was the, the right on the edge of the Arc of Fire, so Blood Crusher is going to survive. Seems there was a touch of Nurgle here, but then the Heretic's chased after the Blood Crusher. Doesn't really seem like the best touch of Nurgle. Now would be a good time for Touch of Nurgle. But it's a bit late for that. Already having used it. Canticle of Absolution now coming down for Cry. That's going to give AoE HP and energy regen. Wow, and even going into the base to wipe the, the Heretic Squad here with his Interceptors. That's a bold play. And not a play that's going to work out right now, but... Conversion Beam is setting up. Oh, I had a dodgy Arc of Fire. Gonna tie it up. He does tie it up just in time. <laughs> just in time there, tying up that beamer. Because one hit definitely would have killed that Blood Crusher with the level of HP that it was at. Now the Blood Crusher can force away the Razorback. It is a very good dogger. Not just bark. Definitely has a bite. Will eat your Razorback if you stick around for too long. Wow, Demos going hard. Does he think the Beamer is inside the Razorback? That seems like a weird play. It's gonna kill it. Mmm, that hurt to watch. Oh, and Deimos concedes! Oh, shoot. I think Deimos got a little bit tilted there by the Razorback. It so you're on medicine, the Space Marine player. Eat the Razorback, wow. Super, super greedy to kill the Razorback there, charging into the base. What the hell? Cry kind of overcommitted, you know, with the whole uh, trying to base wipe kind of thing with Canticle of Absolution and stuff, but... I think, mean, look, Deimos was in a bad position anyway. He... But, I, come on. I feel like he had something to go with if he... If he didn't suicide his BC. You know, get a Plague Marine, get another, get your Plague Champion back for a bit of anti-melee, get the, the Mark of Zinch upgrade. I don't know, there's, there's possibilities. He's obviously behind, he's like one unit behind constantly. Because he's, he's going to be struggling to deal with this this blob, beating both of them, even with your Plague Champion and your two AC ticks, it's not really enough. But, yeah. There you go, that is the best of five. That is the reality of Dawn of War 2 in front of your eyes, and I hope you enjoyed it, folks. So, I guess Cry is the winner. He did a little bit of a reverse sweep. How often do you see that in a best of five? Not too often, but it's always good fun, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed that one, folks. A bit of a special for you this wonderful Tuesday. That's going to be all from your boy Toppid. I am signing out. Oh, and actually, one more thing. If you enjoy the content and you want to support the channel, you should probably check out the Patreon. There's actually about 37 episodes on there of high-level 1v1s that you get access to as soon as you sign up. If you ain't got the money to be supporting regularly, sign up once, check them out, download them, do whatever you want, and then unsubscribe. But if you've got the money to support it, I would appreciate that. Topid is now really signing out.